Like it seems like I'm always a little ahead of myself on goals and where I really want to end up at the end of the year. That's why yearly goals to me are so dangerous because you're never going to hit it right on the head. Right. The only time you hit it right on the head is if What's up, everybody? Ricky Carruth here. Another episode of Live with Ricky and Juan. We're going to change that name pretty soon, guys. So get ready for the reveal. But uh, yeah, I'm Ricky Carruth, your co-host. I got Juan B, we'll call him. Juan Let's go B. by Juan Carlos at this point. Come on. Juan Carlos? That's it. Keep it simple. So, I mean, what what is the deal with that? Like, Carlos... Bedici, whatever like what what like is it two last names is it your mom and your dad is it your what's the story man so listen juan carlos is actually two separate names we got the first name which is juan carlos is the middle name okay keep it simple baronet is the last name juan carlos but i mean that you're branding yourself though so i'm branding like- myself as that you know why because the only Juan carlos that's famous in history is the king of Spain. So I got to take his throne at this point, you know? We just got to so make a king of So you're literally doing state. away with your last name. And you're, you're, your new, like, stage name is Juan Carlos. Yes, like Kanye, you know? What's Kanye's last name? Wes, but you don't have to say that in order to know who he is, you know? So we're going to try that out. Okay, Juan Carlos it is, bro. Everybody That's heard it right man. here. Ricky C, Juan C, and we got Daniel P, you know? P. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Yeah, we got my guy Daniel Perez down there. And uh, where exactly are you? Are you in Clearwater or are you in Tampa Bay? You're in Tampa. Are you are you in? uh, So St. Pete's right there, huh? St. Pete is about 25, 30 minutes, depending on where you at in Tampa. Do you do deals in St. Pete? I do deals everywhere. St. Pete, Clearwater, Lakeland, Orlando. I love St. Pete. Yeah. Daniel, go, go, go ahead and tell everyone your uh, your Instagram handle. <laughs> Best realtor in Tampa. Is that self-proclaimed or how do the other realtors feel about that? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm selling, I'm, I'm making deals, you know, so... I- I think I'm the best realtor here, so they gotta work with me. They gotta <laughs> you gotta take- own it, man. It is what it is, right? <laughs> you gotta take it from me. So tell everybody like how long you've been selling and a uh, little background on what you did in the last 12 months in terms of volume and all that good stuff. And let's hear the greatness. So I got my license back in 2016. Um, uh, I got started with real estate August 2016. I sold one house that year. <laughs> Only one. And believe it or not, my my first deal came from uh, an app called OfferUp. I went to buy some furniture from a lady. I saw a for sale sign outside and I asked her, oh, you're moving. And she told me, no, I rent here. They're selling the house. I got to move out. I found a one bedroom condo in Brandon for $12.50. I'm like, $12.50? I can find you a townhome that you can own two bedroom for less than $12.50. And she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, you want to go see it? And she's like, yeah, let's go. That was my first sale ever. <laughs> so you never know where your next deal is going to come from, you know? You really um, don't, man. You really don't. Yeah. It's, it's always going to come from somewhere. Yeah, you, you can't. You, you don't know. So last year, um, I made the switch to EXP uh, with you guys. Um, I got started with EXP uh, in March, beginning of April. I sold uh, 50, about 50 homes last year, uh, 43, 44 with VXP. And I, I did like seven or eight deals with my previous broker for a total of about 10 million. I, I made Icon Agent, which is the, the highest production award with VXP in eight months, basically, because I got started, you know, April. And, you know, by, this, by November, I made Icon Agent. You're crushing it, man. And and what's cool is, like I said, a lot of people don't realize one deal your first year and then last year you, you hit 50 transactions like nothing in yeah. a four year span. What changed from year one to year four that just made that switch happen? I mean, uh, I think the the thing that helped me the most, I started helping people with their credit. That's that's the one thing that I did different. And uh, it's, you know, this is how I see it. I either get you qualified today or I put you in the credit program and sell you a house in three months. One of the two, you know, so I don't tell no to nobody. I don't lose clients. Either I sell you a home now or I sell you a home in three to six months after I fix your credit. So you just got to find 
find your niche, you know, and, and find something that works for you and credit repair and, and kind of like first time home buyers is, is kind of my thing. And, um, you know, you, as long as you do a good job and take care of, uh, of the client, they're going to refer you business. And, and that's the best kind of lead you can get referrals, you know, so I try to get referrals from every client that I close. Nice, nice. So, so where do you get leads from? Like, where do you find these first time home buyers or these leads? I do a lot of social media, you know, posting. I don't even do ads. I just post every time I, I show a house, I make a post saying, hey, you know, uh, showing this uh, house in Tampa or, you know, St. Pete or whatever the case may be. I post, post, post social media. I'm consistent every day. You know, again, I have the credit repair business to fill my pipeline, get me clients that are looking to buy in the next three to six months. And then referrals to me referrals is the, the the one thing that you know i i always try to get as many referrals as i can because buying leads you know the conversion rates on, on buying leads is bad so i don't i try not to you know i don't buy leads i either try to make my own leads by converting a credit repair client into a, a buyer or getting referrals from previous clients or, you know, getting new clients from social media. So you have the marketing, you have the personal circle, and then you have the credit business. Um, do you own the credit business or do you have a partner that you send all the clients to? So I, I created an LLC with my own name, Credit Repair Geeks. I don't do any of the work. I have a company that does the work for me because I don't have time for that. <laughs> so they basically manage and nurture all of your future leads for you. Right. I'm assuming you go ahead and you send it to them and it's on autopilot and then they shoot them back to you when they're ready to buy. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they clean them up for me. I stay in touch with them. And what I tell them is, listen, if you fix your credit with me and you buy the house with me, whatever you spend on your credit repair, I'm going to give you a credit at closing. That's how I keep them with me. You know, people want to get that credit back at the end. So they stay with me. You know? Cool, cool. Now, now the way I see your business is, is that you're putting all in all this time and effort to to work with first time home buyers to kind of establish your brand, if you will. But then what I see long term is that you're going to have so many of these people that you've helped over time that you don't even have to worry about where to get leads from. You're going to have so many people selling that first house that you sold them and upgrading, referring three other people to you over the course of two years. Like that's where my business is. It's all just past clients referrals and stuff. So we're going about it two different ways, but it's the same result. You know, right. you help, 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 you build a brand. So, I mean, my next question is in order to really capitalize long-term on the real, to like really squeeze it for every last drop that it's worth, you have to have some kind of system in place to, to really cultivate that personal brand with every single person that you meet from here on for the rest of your life. What are you doing in that department? So that's that's where I'm trying to implement your strategy, the weekly email. You know, I'm, I'm, I've never had a database. So I started creating my database. I'm trying to organize it and I'm going to start doing the weekly email. But um, the, so far, the past five years, I've just been, you know, really unorganized. You, you know, I haven't organized myself, database, drip campaigns. I've never done any of that. So, you know. I'm looking to do that now, and hopefully that's going to lead to instead of 50 homes, 100 homes a year, you know, 200 homes. Uh, it just it, it takes a lot of work. It's not it's not that easy, and a lot of people don't know how to do it. How to do what? Do the weekly email or whatever? Uh, organize a database and, and market mm -hmm. to, to that database and, and do the weekly email. It's, it's not something that you learn, you know, they teach you. So mm -hmm. that's that's something that made me start following you. Yeah. I mean, you just have to have a central location that you put everybody, right. right. That you can use whatever central location that is to market to them, you know, whether, no matter what, I mean, there's a lot of different places and CRMs and different things you can use. You just got to pick one, put everybody there and then use that platform to, to market to them. Um, you're right. You're right. It's not as easy as like one, two, three, there's a lot to it, but Okay. At the end of the day, you know, um, you know, it's something that everybody needs to figure out because you need the two machines. You need the machine that you already have in place to get leads coming in, but yeah. then you need the personal branding machine on the back end that, so that you retain as many of those clients as possible. So that's the problem. Most of the agents are just a rotating door. You know, clients are coming in, doing a deal and then going out and then they kind of lose touch and they use another agent whenever they upgrade or refer people. 
Right. You know, just think about how big your business would be in two years if you took all these people, whether they buy or not, you know, and have something in place where they never forget who you are, you know, like a weekly email or something. I don't know. I, I really don't know anything else. I mean, postcards are garbage. They're too expensive, you know, yeah. as far as that goes. Like direct mail to me is good for farming if you're, if you're hitting a subdivision. Okay. Um, social media, the organic reach is so low. I mean, there's just so many. Email is like the only thing to me that is really solid, you yeah. know, that I can really use. It's going to hit most everybody. Um, but think about how big your business would be. Like that's how you get to 100 deals and retain. See, nothing's going to retain every single client. Right. right. There's no system out there that's going to retain every single client. I still have clients that go use other agents. I mean, you can't stop that. It's just going to happen. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. But we got to put ourselves in a position to where we have something in place that we feel like will retain the most, the, the biggest percentage possible. You know, we're never going to hit 100, but let's at least go get as much as we can, you know. So I think that's the next step for you. What's your goals for this year? A hundred homes this year. Let's go. Yeah. I hear you, man. Are you doing anything different to hit that? Or you just feel like the natural progression of your business is just going to uh, make that I'm, happen? I'm, uh, I think I have the, the, the clients in the pipeline to, you know, to get there. It's just a matter of executing. But uh, this month, I'm, I think I'm closing like seven or eight deals. So I'm just trying to shoot. If I close at least 10 deals a month, you know, then I should get there. But, uh, you know, some months are better than others, you know. So you just got to keep going. You know, a lot of times, like a lot of the times when I was trying to hit 100 deals or a million dollars and stuff, like it's like I would always make that a goal a one year too early. Like yeah. the year before the year that I hit 100 deals, um, I was like, I'm hit a hundred deals and I hit like 70 or 80 or something, you know, cause the year before that it was like 50 something. And the next year I'm like, I'm going for a hundred. And then I hit like 70 or 80, but then that next year I hit a hundred yeah. or like when I try to hit a million dollars, cause 2014, the first year I sold a hundred properties. Like I want to make a million dollars the next year. And I hit 600 that's the, again, but yeah. then I hit 750 and then a million, you know yeah. what I mean? So like, it seems like I'm always a little ahead of myself on goals and where I really want to end up at the end of the year. That's why yearly goals to me are so dangerous because you're never going to hit it right on the head. Right. The only time you hit it right on the head is if you see yourself getting to the goal, you know, sooner. So then you start kind of chilling out and pace yourself to where you hit it directly. And that's dangerous because you pace yourself. You could have went harder. Right. Or most of the time, if you go as hard as you can, you don't know what's going to happen. You might go past the goal or you may go under the goal. If you go under the goal, it's like you're disappointed. If you go past the goal, sometimes you don't pass it because when you feel yourself getting close, like you say, like, like I just said, you start like giving yourself permission to slack, right. you know, cause you're like, Oh, I'm going to hit it. It's just like the yearly goal thing to me is so overrated and people put so much weight behind their yearly goals. And it's really a dangerous thing to do because you're never going to hit it exactly. You're either going to be disappointed or, or it's either going to give yourself permission to slack or you're going to be disappointed. It's like, yeah. let's look at the five-year goals. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think it's important to ha do that goal because then you have something to shoot for. If you don't do the goal, then you're not where, where you had it. You know what 100%, I mean? hundred percent, a hundred percent. But here's the point. I'm all about making the goal. It's right. about how much weight people put on the goal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I make the goal and then I just look at it from afar. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's what I want to do. And then through the year, I'm like, oh, I'm getting closer and closer. But at the same time, I'm being cautious, cautious uh, conscious yeah. that I don't want that to dictate if I'm going to slack because I'm getting close to it or that I'm disappointed because I'm not getting close to it. Like I don't let that dictate how I operate. I don't put a lot of weight on it. I want the goal. Like yeah. my goal this year you know, is, is there. And, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, here we go. And, um, but at the end of the day, I don't care if I hit it or, and I would like to go past it. Right. Yeah, like my goal is like, I want to make a goal and I want to crush it and like go a lot further. You know, that's really the goal. Yeah. No, I understand. Like last year when I joined EXP, I told myself, listen, I'm going to join EXP, but my goal is to make icon agents. So I calculated, I needed at least 30 deals. 
but I just don't, you know, I didn't even pay attention at the numbers of deals that I was doing. I just went as far as I could. And at the end of the year, I saw that I was at 50, but you know, I put my head down. I just went to work and I didn't even count the deals. I just focus on helping people. If you focus on helping people, you know, the money and the goals are going to take care of itself. Now, now, Daniel, in order for you to double up next year, what are your plans as far as your routine goes? Do you, are you going to change anything up or what's your schedule like at the moment? So, I mean, I, I started now that I hit Icon Agent, it's like Ricky said, I kind of relax a little bit because I already got the goal. And now I'm focused more on, on bringing in, recruiting a little more and bringing team members to my team. So now I'm going to, you know, my goal is 100 this year, but I'm going to also use the team that I'm building to hit that goal. So, you know, it's, it, 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 that's what I'm thinking. That's how I'm planning to get to 100. And, and I, like that you, I, I like that you brought up the whole team thing because when it comes to you building your actual sales team and then like long-term recruiting and possibly building your brokerage job, it gives you an opportunity to build a business long-term that you could essentially automate and, and, and walk away from. So this whole entire fact that like you're self-conscious about three, four, five years from now, while you still have your 12 month goal in mind, it, it, it means you're paying business to, uh, to what you're doing, you know? Oh, I have a five year plan. I want to retire in five years. So my goal is to go as hard right now, you know, selling and recruiting, building the team. Cause I want to be retired in five years. You know, a, a lot of agents don't understand, you know, real estate is a transactional based business. If you don't sell a house, you don't get paid. And I don't, I, I hate the feeling of chasing a commission, you know, a commission check. I don't like that feeling. So my goal is I join EXP to grow that um, passive income and the revenue share and the stock options. And I'm going to go as hard as I can for the next five years. And in five years, you know, hopefully my plan is to, for my revenue share to be at like 20, 30, 40,000 a month. And if I want to sell real estate, I'll do it. If I don't want to work, I, I don't work. So, you know, I'm planning on retiring very soon. That's the plan. Ricky, that's a pretty bold statement. How, how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that I feel, you know, I don't know if I can talk about it right here, <laughs> but like, but like, I mean, a couple of questions pop up by my, in my mind. It's like, number one, like, what does that look like? Like what, like, what does retirement look like? And then like, cause I feel like I'm retired right now. Right. So like I am retired, basically like this is I'm doing this for fun at this point. So like what what does that look like? And and and, you know, be like. How much like how do you how do I ask this? Like like what makes it to where you can retire? Like what goals do you have to hit, I guess, on a financial basis? You know, like in your mind, how can you retire financially? What in five years is going to enable you to do that? And what does that look like? Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I got to sit down and write those because I, I haven't even, I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know what retirement numbers are going to look for me. I haven't gone that far. I'm just thinking, you know, go as hard as I can for the next five years, build that passive income enough where if I don't want to work, I can take a couple of weeks off, you know, or a couple months off, you know, because I don't. You know, real estate is a top business. Not everybody, uh, you know, can do good in real estate. You got to hustle. This is not the kind of business that you can't wait for customers to come your way. You know, you got to go out and get the business. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a matter of, to me, I don't mind working hard, working 70, 80 hours a week, 100, if, it's, if I'm working for myself. I used to be a mailman before real estate. I was working seven days a week, 70 hours a week. I was making like 3000 a month and I was killing myself. I had no life. And I'm like, I, there's got to be a better way. And I'm working hard. I work every weekend. You know, I wrote two deals this weekend. I don't mind working hard for myself if, if I'm going to see the fruits of my labor. So, you know, hard work doesn't scare me. It's just a matter that I also have a family. So I want to spend time with my family. So there's got to be a balance, you know, and I'm trying to find that balance for me it might be different for you or Juan or everybody you know retirement might look different for me than for everybody else so you just gotta define what that means for you and then go go get it you know yeah that's what I was trying to figure out like what what is it <laughs> what is it defined <laughs> for you so okay um so 
what like in, in, in the perfect world, you retire and you yeah. want to take a couple months off. What do you do during a couple months? Like, what do you, what are you doing? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you want to do? Like, I, I really want to know. Travel, 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 you know, travel the world, go, you know, I don't know, go live in the beach by the beach. And, uh, thank you. You already live by the beach, man. You're in Tampa. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I'm always working. I don't get, I haven't been to the beach in like, Years, I think. I don't know. Kidding. I went to the beach. Yeah, bro. There's no time for the beach when you need to make icon agent or you want to sell a hundred homes. You know what I mean? So you gotta prioritize your goals. Um I think what I see for you is like kind of being if you'll if you'll start to build your personal brand and look at it from more of a branding perspective for your business, mm-hmm. it will actually enable you because like I literally spend so little time on my real estate business at this point is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if I wasn't coaching and building a team and doing videos and doing all this other stuff, if um, I was just doing real estate, I would literally be doing nothing. Like I would wake up and spend like 30 minutes every morning making sure everything's good, which is what I yeah. do. And then nothing the rest of the day. And I might have like one or two days a week, maybe where I have to like go somewhere, go to a closing or show a condo or something like that. Yeah. So rare, so rare that I have to leave the house kind of thing. So because it's all past clients. Well, it's all past clients and referrals. You know, we know what we know how each other operates. We know we've done this before. You know, we we know how to do the deals between me and my clients and my assistant. And I have this machine in place that's running on autopilot, really. You know, it's crazy because it's like a single agent business, like but it's, it's really automated to such a point and like fine tuned to where I'm literally in a retirement stage with my real estate business, still closing a hundred deals a year. You know what I'm saying? So you could actually, this is something that you could actually accomplish in the next five years. If right now you start actually looking at it from a branding, a personal branding perspective and really go hard with the weekly email with you're already doing social media. If you just add the weekly email to it to kind of tie everything together and let it be the glue, you know, that really holds it all together. Then I can see where when you get to the point where you want to retire, that it's retirement in a way, but you're still closing the same amount of volume. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And that's definitely where I want to get to, you know, to where it's automated and you don't, you know, I don't have to work as, as hard as I'm working now. <laughs> You're busting it, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I am. I work the whole weekend. Uh, you know, I'm at the office Monday through Friday. I mean, if, if I'm not showing, I'm at the office tomorrow. I'm showing a half a million dollar home and like a, an hour and a half away. So, you know, I just I just go whatever, you know, wherever the client wants to go. I, I go, I show the house, I put the offer and, you know, get the deal done. So, so let's talk a little about that because I, I always wanted people's takes on this. So Ricky, how do you feel about showing agents? Meaning you actually get the client, you introduce yourself, they know what you're about, and then you say, hey, I'm going to go have my assistant open the door for you. How do you feel about that versus agents actually going down there and showing themselves? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay either way, right? So like real estate is such an interesting animal. That's what it is. It's an animal. Um, it's mother nature and every, like there's so many different ways to structure your business. Um, and everybody has a different way. It's almost, it's like a fingerprint, not a single agent builds their business the same way or structures their team or their business the same way. It's just, there's, you know, how their clientele, their team, how they operate, what their principles are, what their, what their, uh, systems are it's a fingerprint. Everybody has a different way. So, you know, for showing agents, you know, it just depends on where you are in your career. Right. So like if you're early on, I think you need to show all the properties. I mean, we're trying to build, we're trying to build relationships. You can't build a relationship with someone you don't see. Um, but then there's a lot of different schools of thought on that. Cause there's a lot of people who'd say, you know, that, you know, let's build a team from day one and build this sucker up. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of different, you know, schools of thought. If you get to the part where the point where Daniel wants to get where he's actually retired and still running a, a business that is producing a lot of volume, I, I they're like nobody needs to compare themselves to me. All right. When it comes to this. Right. I somehow can do it. I can. I'm still going to show the properties and 
and all that stuff. So the, I'm not one to compare your business to, um, but for just general real estate agents, when you get to the part where Daniel's talking about, Hey, you know, get you a couple of showing agents, let them handle the showings. And, you know, you go drink my ties on the beach, you know, right outside your front door, you never go to, and, yeah. you know, let them do all the work and we'll, you know, split the money, whatever, you know, whatever works. It's all about whatever works for you, makes you happy that you feel good about. Nobody can tell you what that is. You know, nobody can tell you how to run your business or what's best for you or how you should do it. Nobody, you know, so I don't really have an opinion on it. I'm just, you know, depends on where you are, what, what stage of your business. And I don't have buyer's agents. So nice. Cool, man. Well, listen, Daniel, good to have you on the show. Really enjoyed it, man. I think we, uh, I think everybody enjoyed hearing your, your little story, how far you've come, what your goals are, what you have going on. I think it's very interesting how you built your business on the credit repair versus the new home buyer um, situation. And it's going to be really fun to watch your journey from here as you, as you grow and try to hit those big goals. And I'm excited uh, to be on the team with you and help you and watch you watch you grow where can everybody find you uh they can go to instagram uh best realtor in tampa is my handle or in facebook uh best realtor in tampa bay what's your website uh, uh my exp website is daniel uh www you, you gotta or, get the best best realtor in tampa.com going i have it i have the domain best realtor in tampa.com <laughs> too so either or yeah they can find me there. Nice, man. Nice, man. Well, good chatting with you for a little bit. Uh, this is us signing off. If you guys would give us a five-star review on this podcast, me and Juan would appreciate it. We're going to be back next week with another killer uh, high-producing real estate agent. And uh, if you guys know of any really high-producing or interesting agent that you would like us to interview, just hit me up on Instagram at Ricky Carruth, where I answer all my DMs. And Juan, where are you found? You can find me at Latino Agent, and we will be releasing the new platform for this podcast and for more real estate agent training tips. Uh, if you yourself find yourself uh, in a situation where you feel you completely crushed last year or you have some unique system or model when it comes to your real estate business, reach out to us. We're open to having new guests on the podcast. We want to hear about how agents are disrupting their markets, how agents are scaling their business, and what you're doing to stay relevant in today's world. So reach out to us. We're friendly. Shoot us a DM. Have you ever, Daniel, have you ever seen a, uh, an Italian real estate agent make their handle Latino <laughs> real estate agent or whatever he said? No, no. That's well, a you phrase. have now, bro. You have now. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Have a good one. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. <laughs> and we're finito. That's funny. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So you're Italian one? I'm not Italian. I don't know where Ricky gets it. He just likes meatballs. <laughs> oh, man. So what are you? Parcerito, <laughs> <laughs> español. Colombiano. <laughs> Colombiano. Yeah. Habla inglés o cotados. We got to teach Ricky some Spanish, un poquito. That's it. Yeah, man. hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> so you can kill it in the Spanish market too. Yeah, Daniel, sure. be be before we go, what can Ricky and I do better to uh, help you grow your downline and just make this entire experience better for you? Uh, just uh, answer the phone when I call you with somebody on the phone ready to sign give, up for you. Give us something else, man. <laughs> it, there has to be something we could do um, as far as something that EXP is yeah. fucking at, you know? Uh, what you know what i really would like to do is an event you know get, okay. get, get you guys out here and let's that would help me a lot to grow the team even more there's no team in tampa there's no dominant and exp team in tampa okay there, there's, there's a, a big, huge one in miami and they're doing really well and you could build that out one, there yeah there's a big one in orlando too okay uh, a, a lady called veronica figueroa the figueroa, figueroa. Team. yep she has like 900 age and she has a big team um but i'm trying to take over tampa the you know uh, that's my goal so 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 listen g give us some uh some dates in the future obviously it's a little weird right now with what's happening but um 
like I said, if you could put something together for five, six, seven months from now, Ricky will go ahead and do a real estate training. I'll go in on the back end. We'll, we'll, we'll try to build something out, but we'll see how the whole event thing plays yeah. out. You know? Daniel, can you get all the, uh, all the emails for all the agents in Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, all those areas that you want to crush? How? No, I'm asking you. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know how to get them. You what mean, about your MLS? Well, I guess I can, I can go to GTAR and, and see if they give me that information. I don't think they will, but you could go into each agent and have like pay somebody eight, eight pay a high school agent and high school student $8 an hour to copy and paste all of them. Ricky, okay. I, I got three dollar hour VAs, man. You're overpaying over that. <laughs> well, anyway, bro, here's the, here's what I'm saying, man. If we can somehow advertise to uh, yeah. to them about me, okay, and do a, do an online event just for them, right? Okay. And at the online, once we once we get close to like the vaccine being over with, okay, or fuck that. I mean, as soon as the vaccine's over with, we'll just do a huge live event. We'll just blow that shit up as soon as awesome. as soon as like a vaccine comes into place and like we can have events and shit, bro. Just I'm there. Like, we'll we'll I mean, sell uh we'll sell rapid testing at the door. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there with a little laser <laughs> thermometer and shit. I'm done. I'm done. All right, bro. All right. Later, guys. Look, guys, we'll talk. Take care.